Welcome to Wesley Talks, a show where we talk about scripture, we discuss faith, and most importantly, we share the testimonies of our wonderful guests. As you can see, we don't really have a guest this week. It's me, your host, and the return, the resurgence, the reckoning of the wonderful Thomas K. Mitchell, technically our first episode host, for how it was presented. <laughs> Hi, Tom. Glad to be here. So, I, contrary to everything that I just said, <laughs> We're really not sharing testimonies. We, we've kind of done that already as, as, as a pair, but we just want to talk a little bit about rest. We're on spring break, and I hope everybody watching has had a great spring break, had a great spring break either last week or will have a great spring break this next week. I know everybody kind of does it differently, but uh, I just hope everybody's having a good time. And what Thomas and I kind of just want to talk about today is is what it means to rest and how rest factors in our lives as Christians and in honoring God. Um, and something that intrigues me a lot, the concept of the word Sabbath, uh, what it meant back then and what it, what it could mean to us now. So, yeah, I, I remember uh, about a year ago before, before the world, oh my gosh, it's, 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 speaking of real quick, it's almost, it's already been a year Sorry. Yeah. since everything became different. But before before that time, BC before COVID, <laughs> we had we had this Bible study in the morning called First Things, and one of the coolest conversations we had was when we were reading Mark. We crawled through the Book of Mark, and it was it was the scripture where Jesus calls out the Pharisees for enforcing the Sabbath too harshly, for calling out Jesus on on um preaching and eating and healing during the Sabbath, just calling him out for doing anything. Uh, and then Jesus, you know, it's like, I'm doing the Lord's work. I'm doing the God's goodness. How can you call me out? And, and this sparked a conversation between the guys about the meaning of a Sabbath and what it means to rest and how the concept of Sabbath has a lot of good meanings when you think about the fact that our bodies get tired and and our body's a temple so taking that time to rest and honor your temple by giving it what it needs is the honoring the gift that god gave you it's it can be a time to meditate it can be a time to to pray uh, and a lot of them were like you know when i'm not doing anything it's when i feel like i can pray the best because i'm not distracted by the world um so there's there's a lot of ways, a lot of angles you can tackle the word, the, the idea of Sabbath. But what do you think, Thomas? Yeah, that um, I just looked up the reference for that conversation we had in Mark. It must have been like, well, it was Mark chapter two, so we were probably like six or seven weeks in. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, yeah, the, the the statement is uh, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, and um, I think you touched on it. You know, like just that there's this obvious physical necessity for rest. But then I think what we're going to touch on today is um, the spiritual necessity for rest. And um, somewhere along, I don't know the origin of spring break, but it's nice that within academic calendars, someone along the way said, you know what, students, students have this need. Um, and obviously, like you said, people, People, people uh, utilize that week in different ways, but but at least there's an opportunity every year um, yeah. to to rest and to um, give our bodies and our spirits what they need. Um, yeah, so we'll we'll talk more. <laughs> yeah, I know for sure. I, I do wonder how spring break came to be. I mean, we have we have two breaks. You know, we have Thanksgiving break, kind of, mm-hmm. and so probably some of you just wants like. A lot of students complaining about not having time, mm. but it's it's crazy how how much of a necessity it's kind of become. Uh, and I say that because there's been a lot of schools because of the pandemic that have canceled spring break. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know UNT did, I know TCU did. Um, thankfully, because we're a commuter school, we we didn't really have to do that. Yeah. But a lot, I remember, of, a lot of schools getting like one day off this week and one day yeah. off the next week, and yeah. And, you know, it's nice to have a scheduled break 
Mm -hmm. the, the break we look forward to like people in September, September 13th, the beginning of the fall semester, like, can we first Thanksgiving break? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how, how we, we've talked a little bit about it, but um, for everyone listening, what, how have you used your spring break so far? Uh, some will say that I haven't. <laughs> so I'm, as you can tell, this is not my usual setting. Uh, I am in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, because my mother lives here, and I came to see her for the first couple of days break. I've spent the time basically, and this is what I mean, that some will say that I haven't, uh, sleeping the same. So I've been going to sleep like around 11 or 12, waking up at 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. um, and using that time to like relax. Um, I've been looking at a lot of music because my recital hearing is two weeks from Tuesday mm. of this next week. So I have a lot of music to get through and memorize. Um, and going out, my cousin has taken me out to bowling. We pay, played pool yesterday. We've gone to eat. We went to the Sky Zone. I stubbed my toe pretty bad. Um, but, it, you know, the crazy thing is that none of that has felt like work. Uh, especially the parts that are like work, like waking up early and listening to music and practicing music. Um, I sent a Snapchat to my friends and I was like, is it weird that I sent this picture of my opera score? And I was like, is it weird that this feels like a break? And half of them were like, I get you. No, like about 33% were like, I get you. And the other half were like, you're, you're disgusting. You're weird. <laughs> Go to sleep. Mm. But it's, you know, I love music. Music is everything to me. And it feels like such a delight to practice my music when it's the only thing in my mind. Mm -hmm. So to do the thing that I love without any other constraints, without worrying about my vocal literature class, my orchestration class, without worrying about going to class, choir practice, all these things, that for me is so fulfilling. Mm -hmm. uh, because I am, I'm doing the one thing about school that I love the most. Yeah. And I'm getting to, you know, relax and and uh, and spend time with family. And I think a good way to segue my experience in spring break is that we all we all see that break in such a different way mm -hmm. that I don't need to sleep for extended amounts of time, but I know I have friends who the first thing they did at Sunday, they were like, I am going to take advantage of this daylight savings hour because it already took an hour of sleep out of my life mm -hmm. and I'm going to sleep for a long time. Yeah. And that nothingness is exactly what they need. Mm -hmm. That's what fulfills them because their batteries just work differently. Yeah. Um, that being said, well, how, how did you spend your spring break? Uh, I went basically the opposite direction from Las Vegas, Nevada. I went out in the middle of nowhere to Glen Rose, Texas. Um, spent, well, the first first few days we were, we were just at home, spent some time with family um, and just kind of took it slow. But the last 24 hours we went down to, uh, to Glen Lake Camp, um, which shameless plug, if you're looking for a summer job, you should consider being a uh, a summer staffer there. Yes. Um, but yeah, so we rented a cabin there, took the kids and it's, it's interesting. You're talking about, um, you, you use this restful week to still participate in the things that like are work for you, but, but it's, it's, you know, you're, you're in a different mind frame because we even Eden and I were, were joking because obviously we have two kids basically under the age of two two and some change um and so like the last 24 hours was a lot of work <laughs> like, we we could not believe how much we had to pack for a one night trip how you know had to think about food differently we had to think about all these things and yet we get down there and we're you know uh, Elias, all he wants to do is play on the playground. And because we're on spring break, because we're, we've dedicated this time to resting, we can do that for an hour and a half. And it's right. still as exhausting as normal, but the different mindset and different perspective is, okay, like this is, this is a restful and, and necessary thing. Like I'm, I'm able to now spend time with my kids in a way that 
I, I, I don't normally get to. So yeah. there, there, it's funny. There was a, um, kind of a, uh, like, uh, just kind of classic, like summer camp decorations in the cabin we stayed in. And one of them was, um, be still and know that I'm God from, from Psalm 46. And, you know, normally that stuff is like, it's everywhere and you don't even notice it. But, but over the last 24 hours, like while there wasn't stillness, cause there were kids running around, I had to chase them. Um, like there is a certain stillness, even, e- even, um, even still. So I don't know, still kind of processing it, but glad for the last 24 hours. Yeah. Glenic is a wonderful place to be. Yeah. Shameless plug from my side. If you really are looking for a summer job and you want to grow in your faith, do it. I'll be your boss. So <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> kind of. That's that's a good plug. Yeah. Um yeah, it's it's I like the concept of that stillness. Um because you know, stillness is it's so when you look at it in the in the lens of Psalm forty six, it's it's an as, it's an abstract kind of stillness, right? Like it's not like when life is going around, you're just gonna stop doing anything and just go, God's here. I mean, yeah, you, figuratively speaking, yes, but uh, I think it's it speaks to the the fact that when when there is always gonna be chaos or or um things going around and I get you like there's a there's a 10 year old here at the house who is energetic and all over the place and taking school online so he's been here all the time and and running around and asking me to play with him and stuff and it's still resting even though there's the presence of a child which I don't get to see that often um but the, the the mindset concept is very cool because the being being on a state of school versus being on a state of break makes everything feel so much more bright mm-hmm. and peaceful. Mm-hmm. Um, just knowing you're on spring break and that there's no school going on mm-hmm. makes everything feel like less of a weight or burden or whatever it is for you. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's it's like it it you know the whole idea of Sabbath, the whole like design of Sabbath, I think keys into the invitation that we hear from, um, from Jesus and then echoed in Philippians, like just throughout scripture to be free of anxiety, Mm -hmm. um, and to be free of worry. And, you know, I, I think that's what you see in like the Genesis, like the creation narrative, like God worked for six days, he creates everything. And then day seven, he was like celebrating all of it. And, He's free from the, well, I don't know. I don't know if God is anxious, <laughs> but he, he's, you know, he's, God is, is free from the activity of creation and he gets to enjoy it. And that's talking about the last 24 hours with the kids, like the, the, the busyness is still there, but the anxiety of it, I'm freed of the anxiety of it and, and it helps you appreciate it better. Um, yeah in a way but. i think a big source of said anxiety is um the fact that i mean this is me personally um with with how i've structured my life i tend to create a culture on myself or a culture with myself of black and white when it comes to busyness and rest and what i mean by that is that i've maybe probably, probably very much so unconsciously taught myself that rest is only rest if there's no busyness Mm -hmm. and that busyness is busyness as long as there's one thing going on and no rest. And the the, the problem with that is, you know, you can have five things to do and that is normal busyness. You can have one thing to do and that's normal busyness. And the level of pressure, the level of work is different but the level of anxiety doesn't change. Mm -hmm. Whereas, and then you have rest, total rest. Let's say like this is zero busyness. This is five busyness. And the anxiety is here for the first five levels. And then it drops down here for Mm -hmm. zero. But what if we saw it this way, you know? And Mm -hmm. that's kind of what this week has shown me that 
if if five is my max, let's say opera, voice lessons, choir, regular classes, and mm. Chipotle. Those are like my biggest takeaways. Because you work there, not because it's a task. Yes, I don't I don't go there every day <laughs> and get a bowl. I work it's there. Do list. I gotta go again. <laughs> gotta, I just I just love Chipotle so much. <laughs> I mean, enjoy some enjoy a bowl every once in a while. Yeah. R.I.P. Carney, I saw that it's gone. <laughs> um. But if that's my five, you know, and this week I've taken away the Chipotle, I've taken away the choir, I've taken away the voice lessons, and I've taken away the regular classes. And then all I'm left with is my opera music. And that's, I've noticed the anxiety go down mm. a huge level. Your level of striving goes down. Right. Yeah. And what if instead of me saying, oh, I'm on spring break mode, and that's why I'm relaxed because I'm perceiving it as this. Mm -hmm. It's actually this, and I'm just saying, okay, I have less to do. Mm -hmm. And what I what the what I'm trying to the point I'm trying to make is, what if we saw every day like that? You know, like we realize, okay, we don't have as much to do today, or you strive to give yourself less and recognize that having less is actually beneficial. That it's actually you don't always have to be busy mm -hmm. when it's time to be busy. Like spring break is great and it's great to yearn for those breaks. But if it's September 13th and you're already yearning for Thanksgiving break, mm. there's maybe something else you can do <laughs> to not be yearning for that so much. Does that make sense? No, for sure. Um, there's a, a book called Ruthless Elimination Hurry by a, guy, a pastor named John Mark Comer. Um, and that title is pulled from, <laughs> this is confusing. So the title of John Mark Comer's book comes from a conversation a guy named John Ortberg had with a guy named Dallas Willard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and Dallas Willard is this pastor and professor. Um, he, he said like the essential thing in the Christian life is the ruthless elimination of hurry um, to where like every moment is an opportunity for um presence and freedom from anxiety and and like that because it's like the last 24 hours for me it gave me the clarity of mind to say like okay this is still busy but i'm finding rest in not only my situation but in the lord like in the goodness of creation and yeah. um yeah so that that's that's been um I think that's that's just a huge piece of it is is mindset of okay how how am I how am I framing my circumstances to 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 recognize that like I'm not bound by my striving but there's there's peace just there can be peace in every moment if I'm, if my eyes are open to see it and you know I just while we were talking I looked up um, the the full Psalm forty six um, and like, it's this, that, that quoted verse, verse 10 is be still and know that I'm God. And that's like on all the arts and crafts, like decorations at Michael's and everything. But the context of Psalm 46 is like this like turmoil, like there's war and breaking bows and shattered spears and shields with fire being burned with fire. <laughs> and, and into all of that, God says, be still and know that I'm God. That's where the invitation hits. And he says, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And so it's like in the midst of a lot, God speaks and invites us to rest. Yeah. But, but not only rest, but a rest that's rooted in trust. Um, that that he's working that that we don't have to like we don't have to strive to achieve um because he's he's the one working and, and his kingdom is growing so yeah well that's definitely that definitely that, that was a lot of thoughts i don't know <laughs> uh, those are good thoughts it, it definitely got my wheels turning yeah. um especially the sense of striving um i guess i'm going to reference like week two of our wesley series but mm -hmm. We talk about pride and how that is a source of anxiety. And I, I especially, how many times have I encountered, I ask myself, how many times have I encountered myself striving 
out of pride and not out of a desire to do good or a desire to serve or a desire to succeed. Um, and I'm using success as an interchangeable term here for, you know, an opportunity to do something rather than an opportunity to exalt myself, which there, there's a very fine line between, you know, wanting to succeed for your own self edification and your own sense of achievement and wanting to succeed at something because you want to be noticed. It's very hard to, it's very easy to cross that line. And I know that I oftentimes cross it, but I know I've had a history of, of taking so many responsibilities because I wanted to be the guy who could handle it. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. Because there's well, such a, well, and that's that ruthless elimination of hurry. Yeah. We, we want to be hurried people because hurry looks like successful. Right. That's like the, the main idea in John Comer's book and Dallas Willard's thought is like our culture, ourselves, whatever it is, like our perception is that to be super busy is to be successful. And he's saying, stop it. To find yeah. rest in God in every moment. That's success. <laughs> like that's that's right. a win. And, and we can we can again trace all that back to the to the creation story, because mm -hmm. um, you were like you, you even said you were like well, God doesn't have anxiety, mm -hmm. but even God who doesn't have anxiety and who doesn't need essentially rest, who exists outside of time, who can take a thousand year break and come back in a minute, <laughs> mm -hmm. He even invites us to rest by example, mm -hmm. by saying. You know, but by, by saying the, the earth can be created in six days, the world can be created in six days, and the seventh rest. And this is, I mean, we can, we can stretch that idea even further and say God could create the world in seven, in one. Mm. God could snap his fingers like Thanos, and the world is there, you know? You know, like, I haven't seen those movies. Huh? You know, I haven't seen those movies. You haven't? <laughs> no. I've seen Ant Man and that's it. You've seen a good one, that's for sure. No. Wait, wait, the first one or the second one? I didn't know there were two, so just the first. <laughs> nice. It's the best Ant Man movie. Ant Man Ant Man this is like completely side like sidelining, but Ant Man is one of my favorite Marvel heroes just because of the sheer wackiness of the concept. Like it's a superhero whose name is so not serious. And it's so whimsical, but he has one of the best powers in the entire Marvel universe. So to anyone listening, if you're, if you're looking for a way to spend the remainder of your spring break, start with Ant-Man and yeah. I don't know. Don't ignore the chronology of the Marvel universe. Start with <laughs> yeah, Ant-Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the story of, of a man who became an ant. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but going back to the, the was. How did we end up there? <laughs> <laughs> you took us there. <laughs> oh yeah, God. God can like you know, God can make the world in a day. Mm. His, his concept of time is different, but but he took special care to tell us the human race that needs it. Mm -hmm. That that rest is invaluable, and and utmostly necessary. Like it's the utmost necessity to who we are. Mm -hmm. Um. And and I know I'm one of those people that at one time or another found comfort in that rush and it's bitten me in the butt more than once for sure. Um, because you know, burnout, burnout's a thing. It's definitely a thing. There's a reason people yearn for spring break. Mm -hmm. There's a reason people yearn for spring break be like months before spring break even happens. Mm -hmm. and it's because they anticipate that burnout already. Mm -hmm. They're like, I know that by March, blah, 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 I'm already going to be exhausted. They're, they're longing for a rest because they're already burned out and they're longing for a rest that will, that they think spring break will satisfy. Yes. But can, it, can actually only be found in Jesus. Right. Because you can, you can, you can, there's again, again, different interpretations and, and, ways people find rest in spring break mm -hmm. like it's 
it's that rush that can still never end um, because there are people who, unlike me, will sleep for extended hours of the day, mm-hmm. and that's plenty. And that some people do need it. Yeah. There's people that probably sleep less than I do during <laughs> spring break. Mm-hmm. And I'm shooting for seven hours, people. <laughs> and and that again brings out the statement of we what we perceive as rest, what we long for in our human understanding is oftentimes not what we need. Mm-hmm. Because we're used to this culture of the rush and feeling the rush and creating the rush. Um and this, oh, there's a there's a, a magnificent quote that just popped into my head. One of my friends back when we were doing Bible study, this was like two years ago almost. Mm-hmm. But we were talking about fuel. We were using a car analogy. And I said, you know, God gives us the opportunity to find fulfilling things in our lives. And as long as you're doing fulfilling things, things that fulfill you spiritually and personally, and, and I connected it to being a singer, I connected it to being uh, to being a good person, to serving our community, those things will fuel your car to the end of days. And my friend gave me one of the best pieces of information. She said, well, yes, but no. That is good fuel. Serving, fulfillment, personal like achievement and, and self-actualization, those are good fuels that are born from the goodness of God. Mm-hmm but they are not going to keep your car running forever hmm. because the only thing, the only fuel that will never run out is God is hmm. Jesus. Right. And, and that uh, I'm going to try to continue that imagery because that's talking about like seeing spring break as the answer. Yes. Yes. It's helpful, but it's not the answer. But it is an opportunity. It's an opportunity because like, like yesterday, I didn't even know I needed to get to the head place where I'm reconnecting with God. <laughs> like, I was surprised by that. Um, but the rhythm of an annual spring break gives you that opportunity to be like, okay, the break itself isn't the powerful thing. The break itself, spring break itself is an opportunity to be restored back to my understanding of what it means to rest and find peace and rest in God. Um, if I just look to spring break to, if I look to spring break in a really long nap, I'll still be tired. Yes. I'll still be tired when we go again. I'll have run out of gas again, eventually. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I hit the, I hit the spot. I hit the spot. Yeah. Thomas, Thomas, this is a shout out to Thomas, but Thomas, this entire semester, like it's not my entire time at the Wesley, Thomas is like being great at taking like a little analogy and like expanding it. <laughs> sometimes helpfully, sometimes not helpfully. <laughs> it's like he's like the only person, like the, the expert balloon inflator just like somebody who like grabs a balloon and you're like struggling to fill it up and you're like oh you're like <sighs> I'll, I'll add that to my uh my job description <laughs> balloon expander no but for real have you seen those people who like it, it infuriates me like they just grab a balloon and they just go can you not do that and i'm like you know for somebody who works on breath support i'm not that good at it <laughs> that's like my entire career <laughs> oh I mean, it takes me like a couple puffs. puffs. When when we do when we do Wesley virtual talent show, keep an eye out for that. Uh, I expect you to blow balloons. <laughs> it's like the weirdest. Like we need, we just need you to attempt to make balloon animals. Oh, sad. <laughs> First talent show act plays recorders with both noses. Uh, yeah. Australia second act balloons. But um, it's. Ah, my mind was going somewhere and I talked about balloons. <laughs> well, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. I think what we're, what we're running up against as we talk about like just, just the whole idea of spring break, but actually finding rest, like, you know, like self-care is a huge buzzword right now. Um, and usually self-care looks like self-indulgence. Um, but 
I think you have to draw a line between self-care and Sabbath. <laughs> it's like, there again, there are things that can fuel you, um, but what will restore you? Uh, yeah. And what will continually give you life? Um, not just not just enough to run on, but a, an eternal kind of sustenance. And that's different. That's a different thing. For sure. I think a testimony moment is that there's been situations, similar situations that have happened in, in the past year where I find myself, you know, having that, that burnout. Mm -hmm. And as an extrovert, I get a lot of energy from being with people. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's been moments where I just want to go hang out and yeah, I hang out with people and sometimes that hanging out ends up being a mistake because I end up neglecting some duties and it creates like more problems for me. But mm -hmm. um, whenever I'm at the Wesley, those two hours in the, in the building or online are always a moment that feels purposeful. Like, you know, we're never forced to be there. It's always an invitation and those two hours of talking about God always give me a lot of energy. It, mm. it feels, it feels my need for gathering. It feels my extrovert need for people. Um, but it also feels my spiritual need of reassurance and restoration and reminding, reminding myself constantly that I have a community in Christ that is there for me. And that gives me energy to keep going more than anything. You know, does that make sense? Like, yeah, but it doesn't. Sorry. What? Just, just the idea of finding the reminder of the necessity of of rest and Sabbath, like in community. Yeah, it doesn't always have to be the Wesley itself. Like, right. yeah. My 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 music friends, they're a wholesome group of people that I love, mm -hmm. and we oftentimes get together to do homework. There was, there was one time, one of those many instances that I mentioned earlier, it was uh, me, Jeannie, and some other friends of ours. We went to the UC, mm -hmm. and we all just sat there doing homework. Mm -hmm. And we were not talking. Like, I mean, Jeannie and some other people were talking because they were doing music education homework, and they, they all have that in common. Mm -hmm. But I'm doing my performance stuff here at the side, and there was not that much talking going on. Mm -hmm. There was not that much... Um, discussing there was not that much joking around we were all solely focused on doing work more so than we usually are because we were all there holding each other accountable and that wasn't strictly like it wasn't a strictly religious gathering mm -hmm. but but it was it was holy it was it was gracious in the sense that i was in community mm -hmm. and we were all doing work that goes back to that thing right we were all doing work we had all these things to do but we were in community. Mm -hmm. We were keeping each other company. We were feeling not alone. Therefore, the anxiety went down. And we focused on one thing at a time, so the level of things to do went down. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like we didn't have any work to do. We had work to do. But the rush was here. Mm -hmm. The work didn't go away, but the anxiety did. Mm -hmm. And it, again, fill, it filled my need for community, and, and, and having the grace of God present in that moment and in seeing it as a blessing from God to be able to, even during a pandemic, even during a year like this, to be able to sit in a closely related distance and do homework with your friends as a blessing from God. Mm -hmm. it's, it's noticing those little blessings and then you're like, okay, yeah, I have the energy for this. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think, I don't think it would have been very restful for Eden if I had said, you know, I need Sabbath to spring break, so I'm going to leave you and the kids, and I'm going to go to Point Lake for, now, for a day. I, I, I looked it up because I, I remembered somewhere, um, but it's Leviticus 23.3, where it talks about the Sabbath, and it says there are six days when you may work, but the seventh is a day of rest, a day of sacred assembly. Like, and, and that, like, if I'm talking about the last 24 hours, like my unique restful time with my family, that was a sacred assembly, you know, a time where um, we were able to 
be in relationship with one another and breathe a little bit together. <laughs> and, um, I think there's something holy to that. Yeah. So yeah. for you and for our listeners, I hope spring break has provided you that opportunity too, like to be, to be with people who, who fill you up. I also hope nobody got pinched yesterday. Yeah. I totally forgot what day it was. So, <laughs> but I had green on, so it works. I wore no green. I lucky that Hispanic families don't celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. That was, that was a lot to think about. It gave me a lot to think about. Yeah. I'm gonna go, go hug my friends. Be like, spend time with me. <laughs> <laughs> I need it. Well, I think I think we're coming up on on half an hour. Any any closing thoughts? I, again, I just hope that everybody had a great spring break or had a had a good time to just rest and fuel up and mm. remember what your body really needs. Um, and then God knows what we need. So, like in those moments when you know you know you want to sleep twenty four hours, <laughs> and just remember who who who's providing that for you, who who gave you the opportunity, that invitation. And it'll be a different kind of fuel. The perspective, the mindset that we discussed today is, is the biggest thing. Uh, because like I said, it doesn't always have to be strictly religious for a gathering to be holy and, and restful and, and fulfilling. But when you put <laughs> when you put the God goal on, it it makes a diff- it makes a world's difference. And so I hope that everybody had an opportunity to feel the invitation and to heed the call and more importantly that everybody just rested. I know that it's 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 double the need this year because mm-hmm. online takes double the energy, ironically. Mm-hmm. So I just wish everybody a rest, full rest of their spring break. We have four more days to go. Yeah. And um, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, we, I love how you've you've started to um, end these podcast episodes with like a prayer for. Wesley students and just students in general yeah. as a part of the UTA community and, and I think my prayer for for y'all is um is that 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 this week would be an opportunity to be restored um and and to be reminded of where true rest comes from um last summer we we spent basically the whole summer I think it was like eight to ten weeks of um every every week going back to Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. It says, come to me. These are words from Jesus. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and burden is light. So that's more like, I hope you had a fun. I hope you had a fun spring. Yeah. <laughs> um, but more than, more than anything, I, I hope you hear those words from Jesus to, to come to me and to be restored. So that's mm-hmm. my prayer. And now you're probably going to ask me to pray to close. But. Tom, can you re-pray? <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like I just talk like Chad. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd be honored to pray. Uh, Father, um, we thank you for spring break. We thank you. Um, that we have had the opportunity to um, to take a break from our striving, um, but you know it, we're we're still in COVID, so we pray for safety. We pray for um, wisdom in in how to gather and, and how to travel. But um, more more than anything, I I pray for for everyone listening and, and everyone at UTA that that we would use this week. Um, as, as a chance to lean into your promise um, that, that you make us to, to lie down in green pastures, that, that you've prepared a peaceful place for us. Um, that yes, you call us to action, you call us to do um, all things um, for your glory and, and you call us to serve and to, um, to strive, but um, you also call us to rest and you call us into community to, 
to encourage one another to, to resist the temptation to hurry and, and to press into, um, to press into, <laughs> into, into pausing and reflecting on who you are and the invitation you have for us. So, yeah, that's our prayer. Um, and I thank you, God, for our conversation today. I know it's been encouraging to me. So um, we pray all these things in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Thomas. And thank you, everyone, for watching, tuning in in the middle of your break to uh, watch two grown men discuss the Lord. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we're calling it the Spring Break Special. So everybody have a great break. Thank you for tuning in. May God bless you all and goodbye.